next step of this hydro stream restoration. In this one, I'll be adding some coring to the bow of the boat. There was nothing here before and it really has a ton of flex. And I just want this to be more rigid and not end up with stress cracks in the new fancy gel I spray. Plus this should reduce the wave slap and the noise of it and really not add much weight. So I failed a little bit on filming this. The camera died a couple times and I missed some stuff. Sorry about it. But we lay a contourable coring over the bow on top of the tunnel here in the very front of the boat and thickened resin to make a radius around the sides and fill in all of the voids and get two layers of 18 weight over top of it. Comes out real nice. Every day is for boats. Well, it feels real good to be back on this boat. I'm gonna work on this bit of coring on the front that I've decided to add. There was nothing here before. I just, I really hate the fact that this is so flimsy up here and it's going to cause stress cracks and I think there will be a lot of noise from waves and such. So I think this will make a pretty big difference. I've got quarter inch end grain contourable balsa for up here. Down in the sponsons will be half inch. Now I do understand that there is some contention about using balsa. It's super light, its rigidity is super high, it's a good product. Problem is, if it's exposed to water, it will rot, as we saw in this boat. But where I'm installing this, there will be no holes in it. And if it's glassed in properly, it just won't be an issue. So I'm going to use it. I like it. I think it's good. I will do a good job glassing it. We'll put it down with thickened resin and lay a bunch of roofing shingles over it so that it really gets laminated well and holds its contour here. After that, uh, we'll fill all of the edges, make sure all the end grains are sealed with the thickened resin, and then go ahead and lay up some 1808 over it, a couple, maybe three pieces, and uh, laminate it in real well. And really shouldn't see any issues, even if water somehow gets in uh, it won't be able to penetrate the wood and this should give us a much more rigid bow of the boat here. I think it'll make a big difference and it's worth doing. So that's what I'm going to work on next. I've got my pieces ready. This was one sheet. It's able to contour everything I'm asking it to do. So now I'm going to get the sander out and prep my 18 weight that I put on the whole inside of the hull of this boat, sand it down and clean it up and prep it and go ahead and get this set. My surface is prepped with acetone. I've marked the edges with a marker so I know right where to lay it up. I've got my balsa core laid out. I'm going to mix up 16 ounces of my resin. I'm going to then wet out the backside of all my balsa coring and then take the rest of the resin and thicken it with cabosil and chop strand. So we've got a bunch more strength because due to the contour of this, I cannot put a layer of chop strand on the back of this coring. It simply won't work. So we're gonna put a bunch of quarter inch chopped glass fiber into our thickened resin that's about peanut butter and paste this whole area that I have marked off. After we use the resin initially to wet out the backs of this, 
Then we're going to lay it all in here, push it down, and what I have is two bundles of roofing shingles opened to weigh this down with and bed it. Then we'll have this piece of coring bed and once it's bed and mostly cured, not entirely, we'll take the weights off, clean it up again on the tap side and go ahead and fill all of the voids due to the contour in the balsa core with some more thickened resin. Then we'll let it fully cure. Once it's cured, we'll sand it all down and lay up 1808 over the whole thing. Then it'll be completely watertight. One great thing about the vinyl ester resin when you've got a project like this and, and stuff like that is it's actually waterproof. You don't have to gel over top of it. You don't have to do anything else. Vinyl ester resin is a, a real quality product to work with. Polyester's not waterproof. Vinyl ester is, epoxy is, but you can gel over vinyl ester and you cannot gel coat over epoxy. Uh, it's sort of a hybrid. I think this is going to work quite well. I'll use quite a bit of the chop strand to give us some extra strength in bedding this. This final ester is meant to be mixed at about uh, 1.5%. So 16 ounces of resin. We will need about 8 ounces of methyl ethyl ketone peroxide. which I've already measured out, and I'm using the uh, slower stuff that gives you about twice the working time for this. Uh, I just want to be sure that I have enough time to get all of these pieces bed, because there's 10 of them, and it all needs to be one piece, so this may take a bit. Away we go! A full minute of stirring because that's always fun. The main reason I'm going to wet out the back of these is because the balsa will absorb some resin. Now I can't put resin on the back of this and uh, let it really absorb and almost cure because they can't have a flat shape. I've got to put them into this contour. So I'm gonna wet out the back and put them on there shortly after, but hopefully that's enough time for it to absorb what it's going to absorb. And then our thickened resin, we'll go ahead and glue it down. I likely should have put my mask on for this, but you know, sometimes you do and sometimes you don't. It's just a little bit of resin vapors. We're not dealing with glass dust or anything. We're tough here at Rumming Boats.
I do apologize. My camera died in the middle of that. I was putting the thickened resin on, but I guess you'll have to trust me that under 200 pounds of shingles and four batteries is my coring, and it's going to laminate well. I've got two pieces of 1808 cut to go over my coring on the front. What I'm going to do next is take some thickened resin. I've cleaned up the spots where it was really oozed out on the sides because it was kind of high in a few areas. This is all cleaned up and prepped. So I'm going to thicken resin a radius on the edges and all of the voids that uh, do happen because this is contoured. So you end up with voids in your balsa. I can stick my fingernail in there. So I've got to fill all those with thickened resin, radius the outside, and I'm not even going to let it cure. My hope is that I can get a good radius on, get it filled, and go straight to my matting. See what we can My camera died and you missed a bit of the fin roller action. This came out really well, except over here, this edge, I did not get enough thickened resin in there. That's a big air pocket. So I'm gonna have to let this first layer cure, grind that out. Looks like maybe there's a little bubble there. Get rid of that and uh, add a little thickened resin in there, and then I can put the second layer on. I don't want any air trapped in my coring. We don't want to have problems down the road. No. So that piece will have to wait until that cures. So you can see here my failure where it didn't laminate was on this edge. The thickened resin I put in was a sixteenth or so of an inch low from the top of this coring, so we ended up with a flat spot and my laminate, my matting, didn't want to go over that hard edge. So everywhere where I actually got the thickened resin well, which is the rest of this, came out nice, no air. But uh, where it wasn't thick enough, I still have a bit of grinding and can't just leave air pockets like that. Gotta get them out.